Unit 10, Lesson 5 deals with exponential word problems. Uh, by the end of this video, hopefully you can say that, yes, I can explain growth and decay of an exponential function in terms of, uh, in context of real, real world situation. And yes, I can create an exponential function from a description. Okay. Uh, the box that's in the center of the page here is something you've seen before. Okay. Growth, again, um, is obviously when you have something growing. All right. Um, notice again the idea that the B value is greater than one as compared to decay when the B value is in between zero and one. Okay. Also keep in mind some big, big details here. Okay. A is that initial value. Okay. Notice that's the same in both cases. All right. Even if you're talking about percents. Okay, A is the initial value always, and we talked about that uh, over the last couple of lessons here. Okay, B is referred to when we talk about growth as the growth factor, okay, or decay factor if it's decay, all right, and if it's a percent problem, okay, we use R, which is uh, the percent of growth, all right, also known as, and I want you to write this in here, okay, the uh, rate of growth or rate of growth or rate of decay okay so they have the same meaning all right when we do this okay so uh, once again make sure you wrote that in uh, and understand that that's the same as percentage of growth all right so here we go first example we're gonna be uh, given some information we have to answer the following questions based on Okay, so we have the population of this one city in Nevada that I'm not sure I can say correctly. I think it's Win Winnemucca. Uh, I could be wrong there. Uh, it can be modeled by this equation, where t is the number of years since 1990. Okay, so part A asks us, what's the population in 1990? Well, again, understanding a growth equation, remember it's, I know it's growth, by the way, I should probably point this out, because this number right here is greater than 1. All right, so I know we're talking about growth here. The population's getting bigger, all right? And we want to know what the population was in 1990. Well, remember, that's what this is, okay? That's your initial value. So that means in 1990, there were 6,191 people, people living in Winnemucca, Nevada, all right? Part B says, by what percent did the population increase each year? Another way of saying this was, what's the rate of growth? Okay, again, I want you to write this off to the side. What is the growth rate? Okay, they're asking the same question. So in order to do this, think about what this formula says up here. Okay, the rate of growth, once again, is this section in here but not exactly that piece okay the part that I just erased alright because when we're talking about percents remember it's 1 plus R in growth so what I need to do is take that 1 back from there so what I'm going to do is 1.04 minus the 1 that I added in the formula that's right here this is the one I'm talking about that I just highlighted with yellow alright and that's going to give me 0.04 and when I go two to the right, that means there is a 4% growth rate. All right, so again, there's a difference between growth factor and growth rate. Keep that in mind. All right, and then part C says, what's the population in 1995? Well, again, 1990, we just count up one, two, three, four, five. That's five years. So I have my function, the population is equal to 6,191 times 1.04 to the fifth power and that will give me an answer of 7,532 people. Alright, moving on. Part B. Alright. From 1990 to 1997, number of cell phone subscribers uh, in the U.S. is modeled by this number right here. Notice, by the way, it says in thousands. That's going to be important to one of our answers later on. All right, where T is the number of years since 1990. So the first question says, does the formula show growth or decay? All right, so growth or decay, once again, is located right in this spot. 
If it's between 0 and 1, that's decay. If it's greater than 1, it's growth. So obviously 1.4 is bigger than 1, so we have growth going on in this particular example as well. All right. Now we're asked for what the percent of growth is. Again, remember, that also could be asked as what's the growth rate. All right. So what we're going to do is take the growth factor, take away the 100%, that would be no growth at all, and we end up with 0 0.413. We go 2 to the right, and that is a 41.3% growth rate. Okay. Now look at C. Again, we're asked this follow-up question, how many people had cell phones in 1997? So we're going to take our, our formula or our function. All right. Nice and easy here. And I'm going to substitute the number 7 in because in 1990, that would be year 0. And then 1991 would be 1 and 2 and 3 and so on, all the way up to 7. And this will tell me the number of people that were cell phone subscribers in the year 1997. And I end up with S being approximately um, 62,250. Now I think about that number, I think, wow, that, that seems kind of low. And I realize this idea that I highlighted a few seconds ago, that this is in thousands. So this is 62,000. 250,000, which means if I put that in there, this is what it ends up being. All right, 62,250,000. Uh, okay, and that's something I, I touched on here, all right, is again, this is just being entered in the calculator. So you just type that in, make sure you verify you get the same answer. And I notice I said this is approximate because I did have to round. I also had to do that in part C up here. So that's an approximate answer, too. Because obviously you can't have decimals of people, so we want to make sure we're rounding appropriately uh, to the nearest whole person. All right. So we have some we have a U try for you to do, and we'll save that for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and move on to example number two. So now we're asked to write an exponential function and use that to predict uh, the answer to these uh, questions. All right. So uh, very common exponential functions are used to show bacterial growth. Okay, and in this particular case, we have bacteria that's multiplying uh, into two cells, and thus it's doubling. Okay, um, if we start with only one bacteria, which can double every hour, how many bacteria do we have at the end of one day? Okay, so what we're saying is, all right, if we look at our general form, this is not a percent problem, so I'm going to look at this one instead of the uh, 1 plus R or 1 minus R. All right, our bacteria is growing, so obviously I'm expecting my B to be bigger than 1, okay? I have my beginning number, my initial value is 1. There's one bacteria cell at this point, okay? And this thing is doubling per hour. Now, I think it's important when we look at something like this to understand that X is the number of hours that we're talking about here, Okay? So when we're asked how many bacteria do we have after one day, well, there's 24 hours in a day. So what I'm going to do is calculate um, this to 24th power. And again, using your calculator, you're going to end up with an exact value this time of this giant number right here. Sixteen million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand two hundred sixteen bacteria. Okay, just at the end of one day. That's what makes stuff like salmonella so dangerous to human beings, all right, because it multiplies so fast uh, that if it gets in your body, you get really sick from it. All right, let's take a look at another example. I went too far. All right, example B. In example B, we have a local country club sponsors a tennis tournament. Play starts with 128 participants. During each round, half of the players are eliminated. How many remain after five rounds? Okay, so once again, if you think about what's going on here, and think about the idea of are the number of participants growing per round or getting smaller per round? Obviously, they're being eliminated, so this is a decay model. So I'm expecting my B value to be between 0 and 1. All right? 
Now again, A represents the initial amount, which is 128 in this problem. Okay. Every round, half of the people are eliminated. So notice one half is in between 0 and 1. And we want to know after five rounds how many people are left. Okay. Now, what I should have done, pardon me, let's make this an X first. Because this could be for any round where X is the number of rounds. I got ahead of myself there. Okay, so that's the general equation. Now the specific, now we can go ahead and throw in our 5. And once again, this is just entering numbers into your calculator. We're going to end up with 4 players. Okay, so after 5 rounds, there are four, they're down to the final 4. All right. Uh, again, another you try for you to do. We have two examples left. All right. Starting with this one, you'll notice. Uh oh, what happened? All right. Um, we are asked to write an exponential function and predict. And this time we're dealing with percent problems. Okay. So in 1985, there are 285 cell phone subscribers in the small town of Centerville. The number of, of subscribers increased, big word there, increased by 75% per year after 1985. That's a huge growth. Okay, how many cell phone subscribers are there in 1994? So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create our equation. All right, where I'm going to go ahead and say we have y is equal to, now again, I'm using the percent model. So if you forgot what that looks like, it's on the other side. It's a 1 plus r to the x. We are talking about growth here. So getting back to where I was, a 1 plus r to the x. Okay. Again, uh, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers, what we know so far. And what we know so far is going to be our initial value is 285 people. Again, my rate I'm going to use as a decimal, so I'm going to move that 2 to the left. And that's 75 to the x, 0.75. And then I could do my addition inside. So I have 1.75 to the x power, where x is going to be the number of years after 1985. So 1985 is considered year zero. All right, so if I want to predict how many people have cell phones in 1994, we got to think 85 is zero. So 86 is 1, 87 is 2, and so on, all the way up to 1994. Well, if you do that, that'll get you to um, 9 years. So I have nine, uh, 285 times 1.75 to the ninth power. And doing that's going to give me an approximate number here of... 43,872 people. Okay, so squeezing a lot of information in here. I really don't like the way that looks. So let me do this really quick. All right. Just kind of highlighting the fact that that's not what this is equal to. This is, should be a Y here. So our Y is approximately equal to 43,872 people. All right, with cell phones after nine years of this type of growth. All right, last question. This is another great one when it comes to medical things. All right, anytime people are taking prescription medication, all right, uh, once that enters the body, uh, slowly but surely it dilutes itself until it eventually evaporates. Okay, so here's an idea of ibuprofen. An adult takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. Each hour, the amount of ibuprofen in a person's system decreases big word, decreases, that tells me this is a decay problem, all right, at about 29%, all right, how much, is ibuprofen, how much ibuprofen is left after six hours? So once again, I have my equation, y is equal to a1, now this time we're talking about decay, so I'm going to subtract the rate, all right, where, and I'm going to learn my lesson from the previous one. I'm going to write over here. X, in this case, is going to be 
the number of hours this drug is is in the system this person's body in other words okay so let's take the information we know and plug it in all right my initial value of these uh, of the medicine is 400 milligrams okay and its percent is 29 so I'm gonna go two to the left and once again I'm gonna simplify that so that I have y is equal to 0 0.71 to the x power okay so four times 400 times 0 0.71 to the x power that is my exponential function that will tell me after how many hours you could ask six hours like this question or ten hours or or a hundred hours I could plug it in and calculate out how much of the ibuprofen is left in the person's system alright so let's go ahead and do that now I have 400 times 0 0.71 to the sixth power because we're asked after six hours and the amount of ibuprofen left in this person is dropping down to 51.24 milligrams okay now think about this answer really quick all right in the previous one I kept saying we're approximately this many people we round it to the nearest whole person uh, when we talk about specific weights or measurements of objects we could have decimals so we might as well round to the nearest hundred to get as accurate of a number as we can alright so there are 51.24 milligrams left in this person's system and we're done alright so you have a U try left alright you have two U tries left and then a blank page at the end so we are done I didn't know why that was there see you tomorrow